What's up, Niner Nation, Niner Faithful? I uh, wanted to put together a video here covering some of our free agents. Continuing, this one's going to be on Jordan Matthews, the big-bodied wide receiver we picked up in free agency. He played for the Eagles last year. Didn't have a whole lot of catches, didn't have a whole lot to show on the year. Um, he was kind of buried in the depth chart behind Nelson Aguilar and Alshon Jeffrey. But I wanted to talk a little bit about who he is. He's a guy that just a few years ago did put up nearly 1,000 yards in a season. So there's obviously some talent there, some things he can do. So let's dive into this and talk a little bit his strength, his weaknesses, and how he might be used in our offense. This was a play here against the Titans in week four. He'd only been with the team for a little while. He was uh, suffering from a hamstring injury that he he, uh, he got with the Patriots um, during training camp. So that was one reason he didn't play the first couple weeks. But uh, let's move on and talk about this play. So here, this is the very the play that you just saw on the broadcast highlights. What Philadelphia is going to do is they're going to run a flood concept and there and this is Matthews up here at the top and he's just going to run what's called a skinny post He's not a full-on post where you drive here and then dive towards the middle of the field this is a skinny post so it's going to take a little bit more of a shallow angle and they're going to run um, an out route with the tight end the tight end is going to come across and go out and then the running back is going to go out into the flat so just a, a three level flood concept like I had shown in a couple of other, other of our videos Tennessee here comes out in a quarters coverage. They're going to run um, four deep, three underneath. Uh, and so what ends up happening here is this safety in this quarters coverage is going to jump on the out route by the tight end um, as he comes across. And that's going to open up Matthews for a skinny post, and he just has the speed to beat the corner all the way through. One thing I want to highlight, he does that I really don't like that he does is he has – he takes a lot of bad false steps at the very beginning of the route. I'll show this in slow motion so you can see exactly what this looks like. Watch for it. Watch the, these feet up at the top. That's the false step. Um, you don't really like seeing that from your wide receivers too much. He, you want to see them just burst off the line, not basically take an extra step back and shoot off the line. So it takes it causes him to be a little bit slower off the line than some guys. Again, it's I don't like false steps personally. A lot of receivers do them. A lot of guys have great careers while it's while it's part of their game. By this point in his career, he's probably not going to be able to get it out of there. But here you can see him. He, he doesn't really have to do a whole lot of move or anything to beat the guy. He just uses straight speed. Um, let me pause this and run it. You can see here... The quarters cover, uh, quarters safety drove on the out route, and that leaves the corner exposed. And he just runs his skinny post, and he's beat he's he's beat the corner, and the corner just doesn't have the speed to make up on him because he does have some wheels. So he just runs it out there, and Carson Wentz threw a really good ball. Um, he, he is a natural hands catcher, so you can notice here he's catching with his hands. He's not pinning it against his body. I like that from receivers. You don't like seeing guys. Um, pin the ball against their body too much, and then he just got home run speed. So we can watch this in, in uh, real time again. You can see what he does here. He just uses his speed. That's all it is. He's he's never slowed down, never anything, and he's a home run threat. Um, he, he does have that home run threat that Shanahan likes. Shanahan likes that in his players. He likes guys that are going to be able to actually take it to the house uh, if the opp opportunity presents itself. So here's him back in 2015 with the Eagles. This was under Chip Kelly. Uh, I was not a huge fan of Chip Kelly's offense myself. And what I saw here was a lot of what we saw in San Francisco with him. He had a very limited route tree. Um, a lot of times he'd run drags or short ends or shallow crossers and crossing routes. Or he'd run what's called a switch vertical, which is if you have a guy on the inside, he's going to run almost a wheel route, and the guy inside runs just an, an in and up. Um, so it looks like scissors closing. That was pretty much most of his route tree under Chip Kelly, so there wasn't a whole lot. One thing he does well is he does sink his hips at the top of the route. I like that. That helps him helps him cut a little bit better. He doesn't have to do a whole lot of faking. So he's here in the slot. Watch him when he gets to the top right. He's going to sink his hips and turn so that it gets him open 
Sam Bradford doesn't deliver the ball, but he does get open versus his man. You can see him here. You can see right here, he's, he's synced his hips. You can see his hips drop. That's good. You want to see that out of route runners when they get to the top of the route. They they need to sink their sink their weight so they can cut a little bit sharper. And he does really well on posts, on corners, out routes, those sorts of things. Um, his his ability to sink his hips and go is is good because he can use that to get a, a good cut and then use the speed for separation. So that's what I do like about him in that sense. Here's another play with him. I want to show this. He doesn't have the quickest feet, so when he's on the line, he can't use quick feet to beat a press and get get out. So let's watch this in real time. Watch his feet. He tries to do a little step up, stutter step here, but you can see how slow his feet are. Yeah, he doesn't really get much there. Um, he just kind of chops a little bit and goes. Compare that to, I believe this is Aguilar right here. Watch him. Watch how quick, the, see how quick those feet were. And, and so just, again, compare these two guys, and you can see he just doesn't have quick feet. So that causes him sometimes to get hung up on some of these shallow crossers, uh, short ends, again, especially against bump and run or press coverage. He struggles getting open a little bit sometimes, but it's that's not his forte. That's not what he's really, that's not he, it with the best tools in his toolbox. But he doesn't have the quick feet. He's not going to beat a guy off the line with stutter stepping like an Antonio Brown. It's not It's not going to happen. Um, sorry, wrong tab. Now here's what I wanted to go to. This is how I kind of see him, what his, where his value is, and that's really in the red zone. He, he, he can use that ability to sink his hips to beat man coverage, and then he also provides a big target in zone. What I saw with him throughout a lot of the plays was – He's a he's a prototypical possession receiver that you would see in like like the X receiver in um, in a West Coast offense uh, where or flanker where he's going to be on the same side as the tight end using concepts to get in in space in zone coverage where he's not having to use his feet and his, his quickness in there to beat man coverage he's trying to find a soft spot in the zone and sit down and be able to make a tough catch because he is he does have a big body and he's able he's he has good run after the catch he can he's a good athlete he can grab the ball and go which is, again is what you're looking for from a possession receiver in a west coast offense like we run here what they're going to do is they're facing man coverage now new york what they do is they protect themselves against a lot of uh, rub routes. So these these underneath guys, it's going to look a little weird because what they're basically doing is playing back out to their side so that if a back comes out, then this guy's going to take that back. If the back goes out, the outside guys are going to take that. If they go up the middle, the inside guys are going to take him. And whoever's not having a receiver enter their zone is just going to help with kind of a zone drop over the middle. So they're trying to protect the middle of the field. They're playing inside out defense in the red zone, which is generally what you play. But here, what Philadelphia is going to do is they're going to run what's called a China concept. They're going to run Matthews, who's here in the slot. He's going to come up and he's going to run an out route. The inside receiver is going to come up and run an in route. That's just a China concept. It's been around for a long time. Bill Walsh used to run it in the 80s. You can find some of his old playbooks. I have one from, I think, 1985, and, and he's got the China concept in there, mainly because that route combination is just called China. So um, here you're going to see him. He'll he'll. You can see he doesn't have the quickest feet again. He kind of tries to chop down, doesn't get that effective. But he's going to, again, sink his hips really well. One thing he does is he, he, he pushes towards the outside shoulder of the corner, the corner is trying to maintain ins outside leverage, and he attacks his outside shoulder immediately, but never, but doesn't have to widen a ton. So he attacks his outside shoulder, and then is able to sink his sink his hips right there. You can see it, and that gives him a burst for separation, and he just got a, he's got a, a big catch radius. So let's watch this in real time. You can see how this looks uh, with Sam Bradford throwing the ball. It's a little bit behind him, but. They still score a touchdown. You can see how he beats the the defender right here. He just uses this quick sink of the hips, beats the defender, and gets to the corner. Provides a bit, nice big target, and he's got speed. So when he sinks and is able to go, he's got good acceleration. So 
he's able to to beat the defender and get to the corner, and the guy can't doesn't isn't going to have makeup speed on him. So that's how I see him see us using him. I see us using him in the red zone. I see us using him over the middle in zones, catch and run situations. He's not a guy that you're going to be putting on the field trying to beat man coverage a lot. So I think he's definitely a guy that will help take the top off a of defense because he does have that speed. He's going to cause some zone coverage to look his way. You can't ignore him over there again because he has the catch and run ability. And in the red zone, you're now going to have a big target that you have to pay attention to. So you put that with a six foot three George Kittle that we have as well. And then you have a big, big running back in Tevin Coleman, a big bodied running back, I should say, that he has a large catch radius as well and is able to make athletic catches. Now red zone starting to look a little bit different when you, when you can put Pettis and, um, and Matthews and Kittle and Coleman and Juszczyk all on the field, you have to respect run, you have to respect pass, and you have to respect passes to any any part of the end zone. So it really is going to stretch stress a defense well. Thank you all for tuning in. Um, I, honestly, I've been really shocked at the amount of views I've been getting and uh, subscriptions. I really thought I was going to get maybe 200, 300 views per video. So thank you for watching. If you've tuned in till the end of this video, thank you as well. Um, I'm looking forward to producing a bit more content this week. I'm on vacation with my wife, uh, and so we are just kind of enjoying some time away. But hopefully I'm able to get some time to put some things out. If I know there's been a number of things people have, wanted, have said they wanted to see, so if you want to put in the comment section what you'd like to see mo more, I'm looking at a few different things right now. One of those would be um, a review of Solomon Thomas playing inside on passing downs. I'm about halfway through the season watching his film. Uh, I, I have some numbers break down to do that when I do that video. Um, looking at Jimmy Garoppolo's first few games in 2018, that will probably be a multi-game uh, series that I would do just to kind of show you know, what, what was happening with him the first few games. Was it the offense? Was it something else? Um, or it could be any other videos that you guys want to see. Um, if you have any ideas about that, put that out here. I'm going to be doing different player breakdowns through the year or from review from last year to keep us going through the offseason because we still got quite a while to go. I know everyone's getting excited for the draft, but um, we got to wait a little bit while longer. So just let me know in the comments. And if you like the video, hit like. If you really didn't like it, go ahead and hit dislike and leave me a mean comment. I don't care. So uh, thank you all for your time.